What to make of the bright sun over the Prime Minister's country retreat today? From where he phoned the European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen for Brexit crisis talks. The last time they met in person, it was all smiles and bonhomie. But the chances they could agree a deal now depends, of course, on who you ask. I think it's about 80-20, truth be told, or 75-25. You know, you can't be very precise about it. It's like asking the outcome of a football match after five minutes, you know. Um, um, but uh, unless there's a miscalculation, there'll be a deal. And what will happen, of course, is there won't be time to fully ratify it. So they'll have to find some freeze-in-place arrangement uh, to see us through the first few months until all the, all the nation states have had this. A freeze or potential delay that Brexiteers always said they wouldn't accept. Either way, livelihoods are at stake, whether in leave voting Northern England or Remainer London. Here in Borough Market, food is imported from all over the EU, with British products exported back the other way. Vendors here told us no deal would mean they'd be forced to hike some prices by over 10%. You just think about all the like beautiful vendors that like you know sell all these incredible foods and many of them are made in Britain you can tell but many of them aren't as well so you just go wow I hope everyone gets to like enjoy all this food that we have here because most of it is imported as well. I'm worried that the UK is going to drop its standards in order to get a deal with the US and that we're going to end up with a load of cheap low quality imports that are going to affect the poorest people in society. You know, it's hard to follow because it's so difficult and everything changes every day and if I keep doing that I'll just get really depressed. Hard to follow indeed. This has hardly been the Brexiteers dream of a quick and easy agreement. These are the sticking points. Fishing rights in British waters, which still haven't been resolved. There's state aid. The UK wants to decide for itself how it supports British business. But the EU doesn't want environmental regulations or workers' rights weakened. And how will these new trading rules be enforced? For Brexiteers, leaving has always been about taking back control. But the EU's number one concern is to protect its internal market. The Prime Minister tonight stays at Chequers, where the lights will no doubt burn late. There's pressure on both sides. The EU needs time to ratify any deal. Boris Johnson needs to make a decision before the controversial internal market bill returns to the Commons on Monday. Time really has almost run out. Well, Kami, within the last few minutes, there's been a joint statement from Number 10 and the European Commission, hasn't there? That's right, Cathy, and it is significant because it is a joint statement. Now, as we pointed out in that report, there are still sticking points. Those sticking points uh, remain. But in the statement, uh, they say that further efforts should be taken by the negotiating teams to try and resolve them. So to that end, they have uh, instructed... The chief, the chief negotiators to reconvene, repeat, to reconvene tomorrow in Brussels. So the talks will continue, not between the politicians, but between the teams themselves. And the politicians will speak on Monday evening. Kami, thanks very much. Well, earlier I spoke to Lord Barwell, who is the chief of staff to Theresa May, as she negotiated the Brexit withdrawal agreement with the EU. And French MEP Gwendolyn delbos Caulfield, who sits on the European Parliament's Committee on Constitutional Affairs. I began by asking Lord Barwell if he thought a deal was still possible. I think it's definitely possible. The question is whether the Prime Minister uh, and European leaders are prepared to make the necessary compromises. And from where we are now, it looks like both sides are going to have to shift position if we're going to get the deal that uh, people right across uh, the UK and the EU desperately need. Gwendolyn delbos cornfield do you think that Emmanuel Macron, President Macron, is prepared to compromise or do his domestic political troubles make that pretty impossible? Honestly, I don't think that is the, the most important factor at the moment. Um, I, I, I do think that uh, uh, we're in a situation that we've been forcing for a few months already, where we knew we were getting more and more in a tense situation. Uh, there is no more time now for, for, for example, the European Parliament to have a real scrutiny on whatever deals would come out, which is a huge problem for us parliamentaries, and we, we really represent citizens of all Europe, so it's important for us to have it. 
So I think that whatever happens, and, and this is without saying about Macron and any others, it's, it's not going to be sudden. I think we would have, again, a um, mysterious period where we will go maybe to a, a provisional situation again uh, to get the best deal at the end. We have not lost hope to have a, a deal, but level playing field is important for all of the citizens and all of European Union, all institutions. And this is really today the itchy point. And I don't think on this we will come back on compromises because level playing field is the fair way to work all together. Well, but the EU demands on both fishing and the level playing field were bound to be rejected by the UK, weren't they? I don't know if it's bound. It's bound in this current situation and with this current government and this current set of mind. Uh, honestly, um, I don't think um, you, could, you could ever say that the European Union has been uh, excessive or, or exaggerating in, in its demand. And I think that uh, the, the person of the chief negotiator, Michel Barnier, uh, represents pretty well a moderate, uh, logical, sensible person. Um, probably if you had left the, the deal to, to some of us, we would my, maybe not even go that fine to compromise. So I think on the European level, compromise has already been made, to be honest. Lord Bowell, your, your response to that? Well, I mean, just, it just shows the scale of the problem. But look, I mean, I think the, start, the main thing to say here is we are 26 days from the end of the transition period. And businesses in the UK and Europe have no idea on what terms they are going to be able to trade in 26 days. They've had, they're going to be left with no time to prepare for this deal. Our economy and European economies have been hit with a massive economic shock this year. And the last thing that either of us need is a no-deal shock on top of that. So I hope that the politicians on both sides, common sense will prevail and they'll find a way through uh, to get us the deal that we so desperately need. Gwendolyn delbos Caulfield, your response to that? Well, my first response is I, I would really like to uh, recall that if we are 26 days and indeed uh, before the end of, of 2020, it's never been um, uh, on European side. And on this, you will have all groups answering the same thing, even conservative groups and all this. We, we the, the, the dealing of, of turf, the, the, the lateness has always been on the English side. And, and we've always been uh, warning on the fact that we were worried that this was a sort of a strategy to get to a moment where the deal became more and more difficult. So yes, indeed, we only have 26 days. And yes, indeed, uh, the member states of European Union and now asking for contingency procedures very quickly because nobody believes in the deal anymore uh, in a quick way. Uh, but uh, and indeed, I think it will be a huge problem uh, for business both sides. But I also think that there will be solidarity on the European side because there are still 27 member states together. When on the other side, we have one state alone. And I think it is a bit strange that this one state alone doesn't think, you know, maybe at one moment I, I should try to also work better with the others. Lord Barwell, do you have any sympathy with that view? Are you surprised at the impasse that Boris Johnson now finds himself in? Well, I mean, the Prime Minister fought the general election saying that he had an oven-ready deal. Uh, and <laughs> it's about time he came out the oven, I would say. But look, it's not... So I have some sympathy with the frustration that things have run that late. I was saying myself how exasperated business is that we're this close to the deadline don't know an answer. I don't think it's just on the British side. Yeah, I think you can think of lots of negotiations that the EU has engaged with over the years, which have run right up against the wire. Uh, so I think, sadly, this is a tactic that is often used in negotiations. You push things to the last minute in the hope that the other side will blink. Lord Barwell, Gwendolyn Delbos-Caulfield, thank you both very much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks.